So maybe we've got it wrong. AI might not end up being that next technological revolution like everyone's anticipating. With the rise of ChatGPT, and of course significant discussions surrounding artificial intelligence and its role in the future. I've been doing some digging and plenty of thinking, and today we're going to discuss three reasons why AI might not turn out as we expect. It's a controversial topic, so drop in your comments, I'd love to know your thoughts. But make sure you watch until the end first, because there might be a few twists and turns. We're also now on Instagram, we drop daily content there each and every day. Pin comment at the top of the video, make sure you come and follow the page. But let's get into it. Three different reasons why the artificial intelligence revolution might not be what we expect. Reason number one, AI in its current form is limited in its scope. AI can deliver and perform specific tasks well. People always think about artificial intelligence beating a human at chess or checkers, or being able to perform well on intelligence tests. But of course, it doesn't have the breadth of scope yet. And the holy grail is called AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. We'll talk about that later in the video, but make sure you remember the term. But essentially, once that's achieved, it's gonna be able to provide a much bigger breadth and flexibility in terms of machine intelligence and the different tasks that will be able to be performed. Reason number two is accessibility. If we think about where artificial intelligence is being developed at the moment, of course, a lot of it is being focused and clustered around technology companies. Many of the mega cap technology names are leading the investment as well as research institutions. However, it doesn't have broad based scope yet. And obviously we have to wait to see how distribution will go and whether artificial intelligence will become mainstream. And then number three, it's ethics. Not only ethics, but everything surrounding that, the discussion surrounding safety and safeguards, policies. Of course, we all know about the potential dystopian future. If artificial intelligence goes wrong, we've all read about the nightmare scenarios, but ethics is gonna be very important. And if we don't have the right safeguards in place, well then the rollout and adoption of artificial intelligence is in question. And so bringing that all together, I'd like to talk about that being a bit of inception. So I'm not sure whether you realized or not, but each of those and that entire script from reason one, three to three was written by an AI bot, ChatGPT. I plugged in a question into ChatGPT and said, can you write me a YouTube script? And basically provide an overview into three different reasons why AI might not take over the world. And I wanted to see how similar it would look. Obviously a creative output for AI has previously been thought of as potentially difficult, but I wanna know your thoughts. Drop in a comment. Could you tell that that was written by AI itself? that ChatGPT delivered it? Did you think it was a human written script? And of course, we've got to think about this fact in context that the artificial intelligence revolution is still in the very early days. We're almost in its infancy. Yes, there's a little bit of technology that's out there. It's not really commercially available at scale yet. ChatGPT has probably been the best example for everyday users to be able to get their hands on it. But we're only in the very early days and already, AI bots can write scripts, they can write songs, they can do coding. And so it's a fascinating one. And yes, if it wasn't clear enough, I'm a believer in artificial intelligence and the opportunity it has to disrupt and innovate across so many different industries. Yes, we're still in the early stages. There's a long roadmap and pathway ahead and it's important that we get it right. And we'll talk about that roadmap moving forward for the rollout of AI in this video. But there is significant scope I just thought it'd be an interesting way to approach this discussion and question, obviously using AI to actually write the script for it. But with all of that context, let's talk about ChatGPT and the state of AI currently. So ChatGPT, if you're not familiar, is a product that's been developed and released by OpenAI. It actually now has the mantle of being the fastest technology platform in history to reach 1 million users. It achieved that feat in five days. So obviously it's hit viral scope. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's using it. OpenAI is a research hub. They're a lab that's focused on developing a range of different products and moving towards that holy grail of artificial general intelligence. They've aggregated many of the smartest minds in the artificial intelligence research field. And it's really quite fascinating what they've released. Obviously, ChatGPT is their hallmark product, but they released DALI, which you might've seen recently, the AI art, the generative art on that side. They've got plenty of other things in the works. On both sides, they've got a for-profit arm, as well as a not-for-profit arm of OpenAI, and they're led by a really incredible team. But ChatGPT itself is a fascinating platform. Rather than trying to explain what ChatGPT is, if you're not familiar with it, I'm sure most people watching this would be, I would encourage you to go and use it. There's still a free component of it now that you can use. It can do just about anything. ChatGPT is a chatbot, but that name doesn't really help to summarize just how broad its use cases are. Whether it's writing you an essay, 
or researching into any topic as a search engine facilitator as well. If you want it to write you a poem or a song, obviously you can get it to do that. Or even develop and give you the starting code to a website or an application. You might have heard about different universities already banning the use of ChatGPT because it's going to help students perform so well on different types of reports and essays. And obviously we're in the early stages, so we're not sure how the rollout will go. But I encourage you to use ChatGPT because it's probably the best commercial use as we talked about for the mainstream audience to get their head around what AI and the power of it could be as it moves forward for years to come. In terms of the next steps for ChatGPT, the current platform is GPT-3. They've already announced they're working on GPT-4 and they'll be looking to release that moving forward. The scope of what that will be able to do is honestly quite mind blowing if you wanna have a research into that. But just during the production and development of this video itself, came out that OpenAI will be releasing a paid plan for ChatGPT. It's gonna be $42 a month and comes with a range of different perks. But this is really only just a small component of the longer term commercialization plan. If you're not familiar with it, Microsoft famously took a $1 billion stake into OpenAI a few years ago. And there's now rumors that they're lurking around with a potential $10 billion investment offer, which obviously will be significant, particularly when thinking about the fact that ChatGPT and Bing are looking to integrate together and plug in. Bing is obviously often forgotten. It's a search engine that not many people at all use with Google being such a significant leader in market share. However, there's a lot of thoughts about could Bing and ChatGPT collaborating together herald a new era in the space? There's a lot of eyes on that one. If you are interested in the Microsoft and ChatGPT link up, drop in a comment, let us know. I was thinking about potentially doing that for next week's video on the channel, but I want to see if there's interest on that. And while you're there, make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on for plenty more videos as well. Sam Altman is the CEO of OpenAI. He's a Silicon Valley legend, also a former president at Y Combinator. He just delivered one of the most fascinating interviews talking about the roadmap and the rollout of AI moving forward that I've ever heard. It just came out a few days ago. It was on Strictly VC. I would definitely recommend you go and watch it if you're interested in the space. But there's a few different takeaways that I thought was worth us reflecting on. First and foremost, they talked about the rollout itself. And yes, he was talking about ChatGPT, but more broadly as well about the societal level rollout of artificial intelligence. And he mentioned that it's probably going to take longer than people anticipated. I think in general, we are going to release technology much more slowly than people would like. We're going to sit on it for much longer than people would like. And eventually people will be like happy with our approach to this. And why I thought that was interesting is when you look at many of the technology companies as well, a lot of these companies are taking time to roll things out. And that's often the way with technology, that things come out incrementally, they start with a trickle, and also for the ability to educate the masses and inform the broader audience about the use cases. But then, upon success, if they do evolve well, you can see that hockey sticking of demand, adoption of rollout, and that's when you start to see the exponential growth. And so it's worth noting that when looking at different companies as well in the space. On the other side as well, he talked about the transition of AI and how it was actually going to be embedded into our day-to-day -day tasks. Initially, the intuitive logic stated that first AI would be used for the manual labor tasks, like working in a factory. And then you'd see the low cognitive demand roles be overtaken, and then the high cognitive demand roles, such as your web development, your coding, and things like that. And then finally, as the technology improves, then we might see AI taking over and being utilized in the creative sphere. But he's actually stated that what's been fascinating is we've just about seen the inverse of that. So obviously we've seen things like DALI and the generative AI art technology platforms really leading the light here. ChatGPT as well has got quite a creative lens. So it's just fascinating to think about the fact that even the smartest people in the space, they're all still working it out now. We're in unheralded territory. This is obviously all new and it's being developed at such a breakneck pace that we're kind of having to adapt as things evolve. And then that brings us to artificial general intelligence. So AGI, as it's also known, is that real holy grail in what so many different research labs are working towards in the AI space. In its current form, artificial intelligence is often very good at developing and performing specific tasks. However, it doesn't have that breadth and machine flexibility to perform across a range of different tasks. And that's what AGI is going to help to facilitate. In its most simplest form, artificial general intelligence is when we reach that point in time where machines will be able to understand, develop, and ultimately perform tasks similarly to what a human can do. Now, there's a range of different divergent views about how long that's going to take and what that's going to look like. Sam Altman himself stated that out of the different two by two matrix of how things could evolve, he would be hoping that we would see a shorter time frame to actually get to AGI, but then a longer rollout to get to AGI effectively. 
And the fact that there's so many different research hubs working on it that we're not just going to have one AGI. Eventually, a range of different research hubs and companies will have different forms of AGI. And obviously, there's going to be nuances and different factors between them, which is going to be an interesting way to really understand it. And obviously we've all read the books and watched the movies about how AI is going to disrupt so many industries and it's almost going to become ubiquitous with our day-to-day -day life. And many people think that once we see AGI achieved and implemented and rolled out, that's when we're going to see that real broad-based disruption across the sectors. So that's going to be fascinating. It's worth noting as well from different types of investment lenses. And yes, OpenAI is working hard, but they're not the only player in the field. They're one of the preeminent research labs, of course, for artificial intelligence. But companies like Google are investing heavily, obviously Microsoft as well. Many of the mega cap technology names know that artificial intelligence is going to be that next frontier. So they're investing into the space and it's going to be fascinating to see who wins this land grab, while also understanding the fact it's not going to be a winner-takes-all market. Like we've seen in the current technology space, there's a range of different winners, a range of different players, and they're all contributing to the broader development. And just to get an understanding about how big that potential pie might be, obviously it's unheralded territory, but PwC put out a report about the potential rollout of artificial intelligence to 2030. And they stated the fact that by 2030, they see a $15.7 trillion potential contribution to the global economy from AI and a 26% boost in GDP for local economies from AI by 2030. It seems like the AI revolution is only just beginning. And obviously at the top of the video, we talked about three different reasons why the AI revolution might not evolve as we think. The first two, being limited in scope as well as accessibility, seem like they'll be solved just naturally with the passing of time. Obviously the limiting of scope as we reach artificial general intelligence, the scope will broaden out. And accessibility, as more investment comes into the space, as the technology improves, costs will come down, which will improve distribution and accessibility. But it's really the third one that's attracting a lot of thinking and is the most important there. And the bad case, and I think this is like important to say, is like lights out for all of us. If we don't get the ethics right, the safeguards in place and the policies, we all know the about the potential worst case scenario. We're now on Instagram, daily content and news from around the world, so make sure you follow the page over there. Here's other videos you can check out on the channel after this one. And a big thank you for joining us. For now, stay well and happy investing.